down, please. Hallelujah. I want to first and foremost appreciate my father for this opportunity. Daddy, I say a very big thank you. Can we celebrate our president? It's not easy to occupy that office. So when she does what she does, celebrate her. Can we celebrate the choir? I love music, but I don't have the gift of singing. So when I think when I have the gift of singing, celebrate them. Can we celebrate our all managers in the house? Amen. Amen. Who is ready to touch God today? Who is ready to touch God today? The woman with the issue of blood just heard that Jesus was passing by. She was not in the appointment list of Jesus for that day. And she has lost so much blood that she was very weak. And she said, if only I can touch the helm of his garment, I will be made. I will be made. This evening, I don't want you to touch only the helm. I want you to touch God himself. As I was praying, I'll be praying for this meeting. The Holy Ghost told me there are 40 angels assigned to today's meeting. So I know what it means when angels are assigned to today's meeting. So we are going to trust God that he helps us before I do the little teaching in my own understanding about swearing. Wherever you are, can you lift up your hands? Now, if you are sitting, please rise. The Lord will strengthen us we are in a crucial moment. Please rise. Okay. We are going to take the song. Hallelujah. Our God wins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God wins. Hallelujah. He wins. He wins. Hallelujah. He wins. He reigns, hallelujah, hallelujah, our God reigns, hallelujah, hallelujah, our God reigns, hallelujah, he reigns, hallelujah, he reigns.
Amen. Choir, we are going on the journey. So don't get tired. Amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah. Eyes closed. 
All eyes closed. Holy Ghost, breathe upon us. Breathe upon us. Breathe upon us. Let there be overwhelming presence of your spirit right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Overwhelming presence. Overwhelming presence. Kapanta, Vanda, Lebranda, Kapanta, Ambro, Shabanda, wherever, wherever the angels are. Now! Now! They shot under the Kapantiana. Kapapa, Pande. Activation, activation. Nekota Kale Panta Panta. Where, where, where are they? Where are they? Where are the ones? Where are they, Holy Ghost? Let the Spirit of God. The spirit of righteousness, the spirit of holiness, the spirit that compels men to pray. Now, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Let's have our seats. Amen. One of the things that we must note is that a man can't swear in darkness. What did I say? You can only swear in light. And the level of light you are exposed to determines the level you will swear to. I repeat it again. The level of light you are exposed to determines the level or the rate at which you will swear. So I'm going to be sharing the major secrets of swearing to us. One of the, the most important ingredients in, of swearing or in swearing is not a thing. Is not an animal. Is a person. Everybody say a person. Everybody say a person. And that is the person of the Holy Ghost. That is the person of the what? Of the Holy Ghost. 
when we look at people who swore in the scriptures most especially in the new testament are people who were filled with the holy ghost so it's not enough just to sing oh, 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 oh. It, is in, it is more than that it is more important that you become imago day you become the presence of God you become a carrier of God and in my little time I trust in that the Holy Ghost will reveal himself to you in the name of Jesus when you know the source of swarming you will try with ease when you know the source you know the secret of swarming you will swallow with ease with ease at super rate amen let's look at john chapter 6 verse 63 verse 62 to 63 john 6 john chapter 6 wonderful before i read the scripture let me state this can a dead man swear can a dead man swear can a dead man swear For you to swear, you must first be what? You must first be alive. So a man without the spirit of God is a dead man. Yes or yes? Do we agree? So that is why a man who does not have the spirit of God is a dead man. So we are not, that kind of man should not be the man we are talking about. So let's look at John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh forfeit nothing. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are. They are spirit and they are. They are spirit and they are life. The spirit quickness. Is this king, give me King James version if you have King James version God bless you it is the spirit that quickens when we mean quickness you are mean a man coming alive a man who is energized so swearing is not by strength though swearing is not by what it's not by physical strength. If it, by, if it was by physical strength, David shouldn't have defeated Goliath. Are you with me? We are going on a journey. We are going on a journey. I want to provoke you to a point that you will begin to touch God by yourselves. That you will not need a conference like this before you know you can swear swearing is should be our everyday life not just for five days it is when we now have comments like this then we increase the, we increase the voltage at which we at which we swear but back to what our scripture the spirit that quickens the holy ghost quickens the Holy Ghost does what? Bible says the Spirit. The Spirit. Holy Ghost. Quickens. Bible says if the Spirit of God dwells in us, it will what? It will quicken our bo mortal bodies. It is the Spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. When I am quickened, 
I am bought into an energy level of life. There is, there is an energy that sustains life. Oh. And when you come face to face with that energy, if you are not quickened, it will destroy you. Psalm 80, Psalm 80, verse 18. Psalm chapter 80, verse 18. Media, if you can have it. So we will not go back from thee, quicken us, and we will call upon the name. So it is possible that a man goes back from God. David understood and he said, so we will not go back so that I, Daniel, will not depart from your presence, quicken me. And I, when I'm quickened, I will do what? I will call upon thy name. Only a man that is quickened can call upon the name of God. So, we might gather here for five days. If you are not quickened, there is no point being here. Because you pray in vain. You will pray in vain. If you are not quickened, as we have seen in the book of Psalm 80 verse 18, you can not pray. You know, we sing, I will pray, I will pray. Forget the song. The song is powerful. It has life, yes. It has energy. But if you are not quickened, you just be a mere chorus in your mouth. We are going somewhere. Because what we are going to, you will pray. You will touch God. Except you don't want to secure your life. Then I will just hand you over to the Holy Ghost. Prayer is quicken. Prayer is not shout. I can be in the bus and I will be praying. And I will not shout. While I was sitting down here, I was praying. If you, you may not know that I was praying. You will not know. Because I was not shouting. And trust me, as I was praying, I was hearing. And when you... Okay. You rise on the strength of prayer. What did I say? You rise on the what? Let's look at Matthew. Matthew chapter 4. Verses 1 to 3. Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit. Was that of the what? Into the wilderness to be tempted of the what? Verse 2. And after he had fasted three days, now we know the story. But if you look at that scripture, if you look at chapter 3 of that scripture, he was just baptized. And the Spirit of God came upon him as a dove. Saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well. Now, in, verse, in chapter 4, he was led up by the Spirit of God to the wilderness. Because he knew that he could not do ministry. If not, by what? Prayer. So one day I asked myself a question. If Jesus, who is God, prayed like never before, then it shows that for, for us to swear or for us to live, prayer should be like oxygen. Because he prayed to his to the point that Bible requires that his sweats were like what? 
Amen. I want to have another scripture again. In the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. I want you to know why Paul was exceptional. Galatians chapter 1 verse 16. Okay. To reveal his son in me that I might preach among the aiding. Immediately I confide not with flesh and blood. Verse 17. Neither went I up to Jerusalem, which were the apostles before me, but went into what? Arabia. And returned again unto Damascus. Verse 18. Then after three years. When Paul was converted, Bible recorded that he went into Arabia, which is the desert, and he stayed for about three years. What was he doing? And when he came back, not before that time, we had Jesus said, Jesus said. Then he now began to have Paul said that after that, in the space of two years, he won the city of Asia, the, the continent of Asia, because he labored. He went to labor to ask God the secret for what? Swami. The secret of exploits. Then when they began to wonder. Why is this man praying that I may know him? After all, he knew. Now the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me that there, there are dimensions of me Paul never experienced. So I understood his hunger. So one day I just said, Mr. Paul, you are a twist. You know? After all that you have experienced, you still wanted more. Is someone getting blessed? Is someone getting blessed? We only rise by prayer. And by the word of God. An eagle does not fly on one wing. Does it? It flies on how many wings? So as we a believer, you will fly on the wing of prayer and on the wing of the scriptures then you'll be a total man hallelujah in the flesh I attain to my least potential so we'll be like the seven sons of Scephas Paul I know Jesus I know who are you? I am still the beating of your life because you are walking in the flesh Bible says the flesh prof Hallelujah. Okay, thank you. When you pray, okay, before I, before I say this, when we go to the hospital, there's what we call treatment plan that the doctor gives us. Then he gives us a prescription that we should go, and then when we follow the prescription, we get better. Am I right? When we pray according to the prescription of the Spirit, we get feedbacks. When we pray according to the prescription of the Spirit, we get feedbacks. Hallelujah. Okay. 
Okay, let's quickly run through this. When we pray or when we live according to the prescription of the Spirit, according to the prescription of the Word of God, I will get feedbacks. Words are promptings, they are stirrings. They are knowings. Words are lamp unto our feet. And when we begin to live according to the prescription of the Spirit, we learn what we call obedience. Everybody say obedience. Amen. Let me give this illustration so you will know that you will know, understand what the flesh actually means and how dangerous it is to live in the flesh. If you see an individual or a baby, individual or a baby, who is robbed all over with feces, will you hug that individual? Will you? Why? That is what sin does to us. That is what living in the flesh does to us. Or better still, if you come to my house and I serve you food in a dirty plate, will you eat it? Will you eat it? That is what sin does to us. Once you begin to live in sin, you become like a baby or that individual who is robbed with feces. And then your prayer becomes an abomination unto God. The Bible says the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto him. If you, as a man, can't take something that is smelling, how much more God? Are you with me now? Are you with me now? So it is very dangerous. But if that individual is not purified, he goes, uses death all and cleans himself. Will you, you like that? Will you hug him? That is what the blood of Jesus does to our sin. Are you with me now? Because I'm trying to rush. Amen. I wrote down some things here. A man in darkness is a crippled man. A man in darkness is a what? All children of God have the capacity to swear. All. The swearing is a nature of God. Holiness is the nature of God. If we, you know, I told you about the life that we receive by the Spirit. If we operate by the principles of that life, we will naturally see the nature of God bear fruit in us. If we operate by the principles that govern the spirit. The nature of God will naturally what? Bear fruit in what? You won't struggle to do it. You won't. Hallelujah. The reason a man that is born again can still have a sin problem is because he does not want to leave the things that defile alone. Hallelujah. Are you with me now? He is in a zone where he can make encounters with defilements. And tonight we will leave that zone in the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
Your reality is in Christ Jesus. Your reality is in what? Your reality is in what? The moment you embrace that reality, you will begin to do things that you thought were impossible. You will do things that you thought were what? Amen. I said I was going to provoke us to pray. So I want to do that now. I think I've talked enough on swearing. So let's look at 2 Kings chapter 2 so we can start to pray. 2 Kings chapter 2. Media, 2 Kings chapter 2. And it came to pass when the Lord would take Elijah into heaven by a wild wind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilead. Verse 2. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went to Bethel. Verse 3. And the sons of the prophets were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said to him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know. Hold your peace. Now, these were all colleagues in the school of the ministry. One, knew what he wanted. The others came to make fun of came to make fun of him. Look at, let's look at verse verse 9. Let's start from verse 8 of that same scripture. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smoothed the waters. And they were divided either and there. So that they so that the two went over the dry ground. Went over on the dry ground. And it came to pass when they had gone, Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away. And Elisha said, I pray thee. Let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Verse 10. And it says, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see one I am taking from thee, it shall be made so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Verse 11. And it came to pass, as they went on and talked, behold, there appeared a child on fire. Now, Elijah began to swear. And horses of fire and parted them both asunder. Elijah went up by a while within to heaven, verse 12. And Elisha saw it and cried, My father, my father, the child of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took Old of one of his cloak and rent them into two pieces. Verse 13. And he took up the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and he went back by the bank of Jordan. And verse 14. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell upon him and smoothed the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had smitten the waters, they had parted and tear and Elijah went over. Now, verse 15, where I'm going. And when the sons of the prophet, which, view, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doeth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to him. Bowed and bowed themselves to the ground before him. 
what are you after? What do you want out of this conference? Are you like the sons of the prophets? Or you are like Elijah? What category do you fall into? You are going to be praying any, from any moment from now. And Elijah knew what he wanted. This is not about shouting SNS 2023. Swa. This is about am, am I desperate to swa? I I believe maybe some other time, if I'm if I have the privilege, I will show you what it means to swa. It will be an insult to God if after he gave his son to die for me, gave me his spirit, and I wasted it. The spirit of God has. If I take this, what do you call this? It's flower vase, right? Because there is a flower on it, right? If I take away this fl the flower from it and I pour oil in it, what will you call it? You call it a jar of oil. It looks, it looks like a jar. Do you agree? Do you agree? That's what's about to write. If I pour oil into it, what will you call it? A bottle of what? A bottle of oil, right? If I put salt inside and I say, bring salt for me, what will you bring for me? The bottle. So, why? Because the bottle contains salt. Do you agree? If you, a hold you, you now carry the spirit of God. And I say, where is the spirit of God? And I cannot find it manifesting in you. Then there is a challenge. shall we rise Bible says those that wait I didn't have time to go to our team text that's another teaching on this one let's quickly open to the book of uh, let's open our team text that's what we'll take our prayer from our team text can we go to verse 29 it gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. It increases their strength. Verse 30. Even the youth shall be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Can we begin to talk to God? Tell him what you want. 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 Can you tell God what you want? Tell God what you want. Can we be intentional? Can you raise our voice to heaven?
praise. Lord, I am here as an individual. Quicken me. I am here as an individual. In any way, I am dying. Can you quicken me? Can you quicken me? Can you quicken me? Kapantala Prada Shaman de Kabebelego Shakrosa Kapahadeka and Preta Hadasa Dabadiana. Holy Ghost! Quicken me! Quicken me! of verse 21 another version of verse 21 very wonderful I love this version message version have you not been paying attention have you not been listening have you heard these stories all your life don't you understand the foundation of all things Leave it there. Just stay, stay there. Stay there. The challenge is that many of us have not been paying attention to our life. The day you give your life attention, the day things begin to shift for you. The day you begin to pay attention, the day things begin to shift for you. I have less than 15 minutes. So we are going to be praying. In any way, my spiritual senses are not activated. Okay, okay let's pray this way. I'm starting from this minute. If the eagle's eyes is blind, it cannot swear. If the wings are amputated, it cannot swear. 
Can you begin to pray? I receive eyes that sees. I receive yes that hear. My spiritual senses are activated. And my spiritual senses are activated. You reign. You reign, Zion, Zion King. Kadosh, Kadosh. I receive the seeing eyes. I receive the yelling yes. I receive the seeing eyes. I receive the yelling yes.
Holy Ghost, insist on me. Ah! Holy Ghost, don't watch my life to be destroyed. Am I with me, man? Holy Ghost, insist on me. Holy Ghost, insist on me. If you are looking for a man to oh, find expression, I am available. I am available. I will pray. If you are looking for a man that you will do exploit with, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, I am here. bless you but let me tell you this nothing drains destiny your destiny destiny in life drains prayer more than anything else what powers your destiny is prayer if there's anything that drains prayer more than anything is destiny Jesus knew that to fulfill destiny, he needed to spend time praying. Lift up your hands to heaven. Lift up. Lift. Everybody sitting, rise up. Everybody sitting, rise up. I decree by the power in heaven. I decree by the power that established the heavens and the earth. I decree by the power that raised Jesus from the grave. That in the name of Jesus, the spirit of prayer and supplication overwhelms your life. I decree and declare anybody hanging at the corridors of defilement, hanging at the corridors of iniquity, Hanging at the corridors of addictions, Kapante Panta Kapante Kalambo, Paribo Sotana Kante, Ikapa Ibo, there is deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Kepa in the Kupala Sapande, Embre Kapantu Pana Brande Kakamba Kade, anybody operating on the altar of confusion, everybody, anybody operating on the altars of distress by the power in the name of the Lord Jesus I decree there is deliverance right now anybody that is ill sick afflicted in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Bible says by his stripes we are healed I decree by the decree of heaven that your healing is perfected. Your healing is perfected. Your healing is perfected. I decree and declare over your life and destiny anyone operating on the altar of darkness. Anyone operating on the altar of darkness, I declare and by the power in the name of Jesus that there is an escape for you right now. I 
decree that the Holy Ghost will not give up on you. The Holy Ghost will not give up on you. I decree upon your life. Reserve the energy to swell. Reserve the energy to swell. Starting from today, any day your hands touch begins to make exploits. For those who are having difficulty in one cause or the other, for those who are having difficulty in one cause or the other, for those who are not happy at the moment, because the Spirit of God is upon me, He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to set the captives free. I set you free right now in the name of Jesus. I hand you over to the one who is able to save you and deliver you from all afflictions. In the name of Jesus, you will be delivered. You will be set free. Holy Ghost, locate them one after the other. And that issue, that challenge that has been affecting your hearts, I decree that heaven gives other attention to it. When next I see you, I see you swearing. I see you swearing. Go forth and swear. It is well with you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. For a time like this, Lord, where we can still find men, Lord, that have that passion, that zeal for you, Lord. Father, we pray and we ask, Lord God, that for this vessel you've used to minister to us, Lord, Father, the enemy will not look for him in the name of Jesus. Father, he will be far from the reach of the devil in the name of Jesus. Father, you will direct his path, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, he will not be found wanting in the name of Jesus. I pray for him, Lord God, that everything he lays his hands to do, Lord, shall prosper in the name of Jesus.